In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The police who investigate crime. And the SJW district attorneys who don't prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Hello everyone. In this video, I wanted to talk about something that isn't a new phenomenon. In fact, it's something I've talked about on this channel before. I think one of the first videos I ever posted on this channel talked about this subject. What I wanted to talk about is the phenomenon of how Americans are now second-class citizens in their own country. In many parts of the country for years now, illegal immigrants have had more rights than US citizens. I say that because in large parts of the country, illegal immigrants have almost complete impunity to commit crimes. Now you might be sitting there completely skeptical of this. I've heard nothing about illegal immigrant impunity and yeah, that's exactly the point. This is something that is not general knowledge. It's not something you're going to hear talked about on the news. It's something that happens behind closed doors. It's on a need to know basis. It works like this. A bunch of social justice warriors take over a prosecutor's office. They then review all of the people, all of the arrests that come in by police, and they check on people's immigration status. If they're an illegal immigrant, if them being charged or convicted of a crime, might result in them getting deported, then the prosecutor's office just doesn't charge them. But I also agree that if we really want to protect our immigrant communities, we have to provide protection to those who are accused of crime. And that's what I've done in Brooklyn. I've established protocols in Brooklyn to make sure that we can hold people accountable, but in a fair and just way. If a case is already filed, it'll be dismissed or it'll be pled out to something ridiculous so that the person remains in the country. Now this has led to a rise of these massive Hispanic gangs, which now exist in almost every single state and every single city. 96% of the drugs that are consumed in the US are smuggled across the US-Mexican border and it is all of these Hispanic gangs in the United States that oversees the trafficking and distribution of all of these smuggled drugs. Now, the most infamous of these gangs is the MS-13 gang, which President Trump likes to talk about at all of his rallies. However, the MS-13 gang is hardly the most notorious or powerful. In fact, in most states, the most powerful gang is going to be the Mexican Mafia. Now, Mexican Mafia uses a specific number, the number 13, which it associates itself with because the number 13, well, M is the 13th letter of the alphabet. MS-13, meanwhile, is a Salvadorian gang. In the name of MS-13, it comes from their gang name, Mara Salvatrucha. So why is there a 13 in their name if they're Salvadorian and not Mexican? Well, it's because that gang is subservient to the Mexican mafia. In any prison yard where MS-13 gang members exist along with Mexican mafia gang members, well, the MS-13 guys are going to get taxed. That's because the Mexican mafia in any prison yard in which these two gangs exist is going to be the more powerful organization. Now in this video, I wanna just give you a crash course of how this works, how gang members and criminals who are illegal immigrants basically get let off the hook for serious felony crimes they commit. And I'm going to use this article from PBS that talks about the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office. Now, before I do that though, I wanna point out this is not something that's limited to Philadelphia. You know, I, I make fun of Larry Krasner a lot on this channel, but this is something that's commonplace elsewhere as well. They do the same thing in parts of New York City, they do it in Chicago, they do it in California, Oregon, and Washington. I'm pretty sure the Harris County District Attorney's Office in Houston, Texas does this as well. I mean, a lot of people forget that Houston, which is in Harris County, that Kim Ogg, who's the district attorney there, was supported by George Soros. She's on the progressive payroll. 
So here's an article, A Different View of Justice, Philly DA appointee seeks to avoid deportations for some immigrant defendants. And uh, we have the picture of this person. And uh, the first question I have is, is this a woman or a man? I, based off the picture, I can't tell. I mean, it seems like the clothes is what a, a man would wear, but what man would ever wear those glasses? Anyways, uh, I, I, moving on. The article states, On May 29, 2017, a fight broke out at Chihuahua Bar and Restaurant. Why is there, why is there a, a bar in Philly named after the Mexican state of Chihuahua? Okay, anyways... On May 29, 2017, a fight broke out at a, at Chihuahua Bar and Restaurant in Philadelphia's only neighborhood. When the dust settled, 26-year-old Jose Sanchez Mercado was rushed to the hospital for emergency eye surgery. Do you want to tell how you can tell that someone's an illegal immigrant? I mean, this is a stereotype, obviously, uh, so it's, it's not going to always apply 100% of the time. But if someone has two last names, uh, that's a pretty good indicator that they were not born in the United States. So anyways, so this guy has to have surgery on his eyes. So I mean, there's a risk that he is going uh, gonna go blind in that eye, right? The article states the man taken into custody for chucking a beer bottle at him, 18 year old Jose Ramirez Diaz, Again, two last names there. Had recently arrived in the United States after family members here sponsored him for a green card. Now he was facing a felony assault charge. Well, yeah, if you assault someone and they have to have surgery on their eye, uh, that's a pretty serious deal. I think that you should be prosecuted for it. And if you're found guilty, there should be a punishment. Like you should have to serve time for doing something to another human being that required them to have surgery where they could have lost an eye. But here's where uh, the brilliance of Larry Krasner's district attorney's office comes in. Even though he had legal status here, he was looking at automatic deportation said Caleb Arnold, immigration counsel with the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office. If you're an immigrant, a minor criminal conviction can trigger removal, whether or not you have lawful permanent residency. In recent years, urban district attorney's offices in places such as Chicago, Brooklyn, and Philadelphia have created positions to oversee charging and sentencing for immigrant defendants. The goal is to prosecute criminal offenses without initiating what they see as the additional penalty of deportation. Okay, here's some thoughts on this. First of all, since when is bashing someone to the point where they have to have surgery on their eye considered a minor criminal conviction? That seems pretty serious to me. If someone already broke our immigration laws, if they're in the country illegally, and then they assault someone, and that person has to have surgery, like serious surgery in the hospital as a result of that, why do we want them in our country? Why wouldn't we want to deport someone like that? In what universe do we want just violent felons gang members to just be out in our community why are we protecting these people why would we want to do something like this i'm going to skip ahead in the article in the first year on the job arnold said that they consulted on around 300 cases and recommend changing plea deals in 120 of them the remaining cases are either still open, had no immigration consequence, or were too serious to change. If you are an illegal immigrant living in Philadelphia, and you're a Mexican Mafia gang member, or an MS-13 gang member, so long as you don't kill the person, you could stab them, you could shoot them, you could steal their money, you could rob them, you could break into their house, 
You could defraud them. You could sell drugs to whoever you wanted. You basically can do anything as long as you don't kill someone or commit a sex crime. You otherwise have total impunity to do whatever you want. And there will be people working in the prosecutor's office, social justice warrior types, where you can't even tell whether the person is a man or a woman, and those people's job is to protect you, to make sure nothing bad happens to you. That's how it works in the United States today in many of these big cities. It's for this reason why Mexican gangs are so powerful in the United States. It's the reason why there's so much drugs in the United States. It's the reason why these Mexican Mafia and MS-13 gangs are so powerful. Now what happens when you're a United States citizen and you commit these same crimes? Well, you don't get treated this way. They're going to charge you with whatever crime you committed. And you're not going to get any sort of special plea deal to help avoid you getting deported from the country. You're going to be charged more often. You're going to serve more time in jail more time in prison, you're going to be treated much differently, much more harshly than an illegal immigrant would be. That's what I mean when I say that in large parts of the country, U.S. citizens have less rights and privileges than illegal immigrants do. If you're a U.S. citizen and you break into someone's house, you steal their stuff, you're going to be charged with that and you're going to go to jail. But if an illegal immigrant breaks into your house, if they steal your stuff, they're either not going to get charged with it, or if they are charged, they're going to receive a much more lenient plea offer, and they're probably not going to have to serve any time. Because all of those things are factors that could be considered by ICE in deciding to deport them. This is the clown world that we live in today. Our Democratic candidates for president go to the debate and try and one-up each other on how much free stuff they're going to give to illegal immigrants, while in our justice system, we give them all sorts of rights and privileges that U.S. citizens have, and we basically give them complete impunity to commit crimes, which is amazing given the fact that so many of the people who illegally immigrate to the United States cite the own lawlessness that exists in their own countries. Once again, I think I've discussed this multiple times on this channel, the conviction rate for criminals in Mexico is 4%. 4% of people who commit felony crimes in Mexico ever get convicted. And of course, people want to leave Mexico because of the corruption, the violence, the just complete atrocities that happen every day there. And these people come to our country, and then what do we do? We give them impunity to commit whatever crimes they want. <laughs> it blows my mind how, how horrible the leadership of the people running our institutions in this country is. How, how awful these people are. The level of terribleness it comes to making the decisions they're going to make. They're going to turn the United States into Mexico over time. It's just going to happen. It's going to have the same demographics. It's going to have the same corruption problems. It's going to have the same terrible rate of convicting people of committing crimes. And it's going to eventually be the case that our rule of law will just collapse entirely. Our country's utter commitment to radical liberalism is destroying our institutions. For purely ideological reasons, we're running this country into the ground. We need to take dramatic action to change the way that our government works, to reestablish rule of law, and to rebuild local communities. Because if this keeps continuing, eventually things are going to collapse. I'm sorry if this video was depressing, but if you nonetheless liked it and you're not subscribed to my channel, I just ask please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.